Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim BSC and we just come by the Port Jeff Sea Buoy and we are making our way inside Port Jeff Harbor. Trying to stack the range right right now. We call it stacking the range when you get the range lights that uh, when you're off one way or the other they're like that and when they're right in the middle they're stacked. One right on top of the other. So we're uh, just a few hours away from this uh, nor'easter that's going to set in and maybe cover the area with a few feet of snow. Uh, single digit temperatures and a howling wind. So uh, we headed out and uh, the idea is that we get to the dock and uh, stay here until the storm passes. And when it's all safe we'll go back to New York again. Probably be here for a couple days. So right now we're coming up to a very tight. Uh, the jetties in here getting into uh, Port Jeff, and it's a pretty pretty tight spot. You'll see it when we when we come in there. There's sand on either side, and uh, the tide out here is running this way. So I'm being set from right to left. So I gotta aim high on the red buoy. Once I get in the jetties, the lateral effect should be diminished. But that's the hope. All right, Dalton, we're getting close. Uh, you don't have to head out there yet, but uh, we're approaching the jetties. With the cold weather, I have to call people early to make sure that they uh, have time to put their mittens on. Security call, Tug Elk River is inbound, Port Jeff. Tug Elk River. Now where we're going, we're going to the inside berth at the terminal over here, and in order to do that, the berth is so small that it can't, the barge can't discharge if I just drive it in there. So we're going to have to go into the middle of the anchorage and actually break down. When we say break down, that means that we, you break the tow, you stop, you know, you're taking your lines. So we'll disconnect from the stern, and we're going to run around and see if we can get can't do this on every barge. I think we can do it on this one, but uh, I haven't worked with this barge to do it on this one, but I have a good feeling about it. So the idea is that we go up to the bow and we make up backwards on it, and that way we can drive it in stern first, and that way it will have room for the connection, and uh, that will be good. Unfortunately, there is no notch up there in the bow, and in fact, there's actually a little uh, a little hump where that, that shoots the the anchor off so the anchor misses the bridles and that sort of thing and so we have to be uh, very aware of that and uh, try to have my bow on that hump and then then the whole issue of keeping the bow there is difficult instead of normally putting up a headline like you normally see me do we'll have to put up two one that goes one way and one that goes the other it'll keep the bow from moving back and forth while we put up the bush gear and then there's the whole, then the other thing where I say I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work with this barge is that we're going to have to let all of our push gear out because normally when there's a notch, the barge goes into the notch and the push gear accounts for that. Since there is no notch, we're going to be, you know, five to eight feet further back and that's going to use up more push gear. All right, now I need to pay attention here. And everything's looking good. I'm looking at my red predictor line to see how everything's going. Everything seems to be good. I can see the tide working on the buoys, and it is going from right to left, as I was talking about before. And uh, I'm not as high on these buoys as I'd like to be. 
I was getting over that way and it looked like there was no problems and now as I'm getting closer I'm thinking you know what I'll feel better if I just come over to the right a little bit so right now it looks like I'm missing you can see where the range lights are over there and right now even though with this angle I'm still stacking the range so I'm right in the middle of the channel but I want to aim this way because the tide is pushing me over until I get into the jetties that's where these range lights really work well it looks like I'm headed for the for the red buoy here, but if I look at the range lights, I can see them stacked, and which means I'm dead center in the channel. I think I've said that like ten times already. I think you guys probably got that. Not a big deal. Okay, now as I get closer, I'm going to start easing off of uh, trying to get higher on the buoys. I think I'm good, so I can start straightening up on the channel. And as I fall down, I uh, be aware of everything, but it looks like I'm going to be in the right spot. I'm looking, the range is not stacked anymore. You can see, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but the two red lights up there are at an angle, so that means that I'm not dead center in the channel. I'm more to the right of it, which is just what we wanted because the tide's going to send us to the left. So now I can aim right for the red, for the range lights, and as I get set down, it should be uh, pushing us right towards where we want to be. And uh, incidentally, the tide will be coming out of here, so that's another good thing that helps us. It helps out our steering. In other words, out here in the sound, the tide's going from right to left. That sound is emptying to uh, Rhode Island sound, and. Port Jeff Harbor is emptying into the sound, so we transition here. The, the tide, and you can kind of see it. You should be able to see that on the camera. You can see the water is going almost at a 45 degree angle, and that's because it's wanting to come out of Port Jeff, but it's getting caught in the water that's going out of the sound here, so that's why it doesn't come straight out the channel. And so I see that, and I'm aiming a little bit to the right, just in case some of that grabs me. Remember that uh, a loaded barge is affected by the, the tide or the current much more than the wind, and a light barge is ex affected much more by the wind than, than a loaded one. All right, things are looking good. always amazed at how many people write in the comments about living in or growing up around or memories in Port Jeff. <laughs> it seems like every time I do a video that has something to do with Port Jeff, there's a, you know, a whole bunch of comments about people that are over here. It's very cool. Thank you for that. And why not? Look at it. It's beautiful. It's a little cold this time of year, but uh, sand dunes are amazing. A lot of people write about growing up here as a kid and uh, all the different places that they go. And, uh, I can't imagine too many places better. Okay, so we are now in the jetties and things will start to open up in here. What I mean by that is that you can't see it because I don't have a, something on the chart, but uh, the, the narrowest part of, the, of, of where I came through is starting to open up and I have more room. So I'm slowing down now, just because we have to, it's a loaded barge, so I'm going to have to take off way anyway. Once we get up there, we'll be remaking. And I've been trying to think of how I could do this. You guys always want to see how we remake it. And I think this camera right here, there it is. I think it down. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see much more of what's going on that way. There, that's fine. Yeah, just so you can see the bow. All right, so um, when we go to remake, I'll probably be actually downstairs working the winch and working the lower controls, but I'll keep my microphone with me so you'll be able to hear me, but uh, you guys will be watching from overhead.
know? Yeah. Well, we're we're, we're going to try it. So when we break down, I'm going to try to twist as much as I can to get all the push gear all the way out at the end. It's not going to reach all the way to those. To the bits? No. It, it won't? No. I thought you said that you did that. You no, told, you no, told I, I've ne- no, I've never done it. I, I thought you said that you did this going into Stanford or something like that. No, Sean's done it going into Stanford. He says the push cables go on those cleats next to the anchor. Really? And they barely reach. Okay. All right. Well, that changes everything. So then, uh, so do we run our lines for our bow all the way to the corners, I guess? I don't, I don't know if he puts a bow line up. Sean says he's done it into Stanford. But he says it's a pain in the ass. All right, then, then then let's let's scrap that idea. Let's you just, just do a long side, starboard side too. Yeah, and we, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? This is a uh, too, yeah, too, too many unknown variables here. I think that's the easiest way to do it. I mean, it's up. I mean, no, you're, no, you're no, handling no. it. I was only saying that because I I was under the impression that you said you've done this and that it's worked on this barge. So. Yeah. So Sean says he's done it in the Stanford, but he doesn't like it. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. That's what we'll, we'll go with what's easier. Okay. Park City. Park City from the Elk River. Very good, yep. Thank you for that. Park City, Elk River. Park City back. Good morning, Cap. Hey, uh, I'm going to have to remake here, so come on over. I'll duck right out of the channel and uh, be to the west. Yeah, Cap, it's the Elk River. I'm looking at you here. I just want to let you know I'm going to be remaking, so I'm going to jump, duck out of the channel and uh, head to the west and uh, have you give you the whole thing. So bring her on. Uh, Cap, I'm sorry. Another radio was blasting here in the, you know, around the Arctic State again. Yeah, not a problem. I'm, I, I just came in through the jetties here. I'm going to be coming over right, so to the west. I'm going to give you the whole channel, so come on up. Right, Very good. Okay, so I guess we're going to go to plan B. Um, I had not made up on this barge before, so but I was going with information that it could be done, but apparently not as easily as I had hoped. So we're going to make up alongside this thing, heads and tails, and then drive it in what we call uh, a tug-2 landing, except that there's a case on that this thing should, that we, we I think if we do this right, we uh, so much of the barge sticks out that that we won't have to worry about uh, having the tug up against the dock because the tug will go up to the caisson and before we get there, 20 feet before we get there, we're supposed to have everything stop. Maybe the, the barge will be in position for a front side.
All right, so now we're out of the channel, and we're just slowing it down. We're going to get a little further up here. The wind is coming from right to left, and uh, like I say, the wind shouldn't be that big an issue because the barge is loaded, and the wind is, I mean, it's hardly anything. What is it, 8.4 knots, so it's not that, shouldn't be that big a deal. Remember, when we make up heads and tails on it, we're going to be having to turn around 180 degrees. So since I want to slow down anyway, maybe I can start pointing it in, pointing it into the wind, even though there isn't that much on there. S302 Elk River. Hey Hugh, you on this one? DS302 Elk River. Oh, I guess he's out there. Oh, there you are, Hugh. Okay, so here we go. All right, Dalton, you ready? Uh, we can do that side. So I come down to the doghouse. You guys can't see this, but I'm firing up the tow machine. This is the winch.
All right, they've got that side done. So now we go over. On it. Okay, thanks for that info. I had thought I could have. I guess I misunderstood him. I could have swore uh, Dalton. I thought Dalton said, "Oh yeah, no." He said, "You've done this with this barge. It fits." Because yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I don't think he's lying to me. I think I just heard what I wanted to hear. You mean fits and push gear? Yeah, yeah. It might. Well, yeah, but but but. It's going to be right up on the paddle pad. And and uh. He also said that we can we can make up and almost do a tug two landing and it sticks out far. That is cool, right? You say the, the bow is not right. Right. To that cell. All right, good deal. Because that's uh, the, I was I was saying the last time the last time I came over to the inside thing was with with Jeff Davis. <laughs> that was a while ago. I've always done the outside one ever since. Now we had to. 17 was on contract with these guys uh -huh. before we bought the 25. Uh -huh. And that was the way we did it every, every single dollar. Nice. Because we couldn't fit the other one. Right, 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 right. And then we couldn't put it in push training. And then when we got the 25, they wanted to see if I could bring up push gear for the 25 to go in the hole that way. And I said, you can, but it's going to be fucking tight. Right. Right, right, right. We put it, we put it, push here, look like this, you know, backwards for Stanford and uh, uh, Bridgeport up to the bridge. Yep, yep, yep. It's just, you know, it's just you got to be on your fucking game, man. Yeah, imagine.
Okay, so so originally this the, the stern line is too long, and the tankerman wasn't able to get enough slack on it. So Dalton is going up there to do the job for the tankerman. Um, Dalton's really good about this sort of stuff, so. the day again. All right, back to the upper house. Drift into the channel, everything's good. I'm gonna write in the log that we remade. Starting to turn. How about you, Dalton? You got me? Yeah, I came back to the boat for a minute. I'll talk about it. No, that's fine. No, it's fine. Just, just uh, doing comms check with you. Well, you know what? As much as I, uh, wanted to put it in push gear and drive it in there because one of my friends told me he does that all the time with a different barge. I knew this barge was going to be a anomaly and difficult to do and so when it turns out that uh, I misunderstood Dalton, I thought Dalton said he had been on a boat that had done it with this barge before and then he said that he hadn't done that so uh, I feel much better being made up alongside. So. thing you're not going to see as we start coming around and getting to the inner harbor here in the summer there are literally thousands of boats moored up here it's crazy you look at the you look at the radar screen it's just a thousand dots on the screen and I don't see one of them out there now so they're they're all tucked away as they should be for the winter all right, now I was twisting. I'm gonna stop my twist because as I drive ahead, it's gonna drive the bow around to the right anyway. See everything still coming around. I've got my rudder centered up right now, I'm adding power. The power with the rudder straight should hopefully slow the bow moving around. As we get into the direction we want to go, I might have to give it a little counter rudder, meaning 
turning to the left to slow it down, but it's it's working rather well right now, so I think everything's going to be fine. So to, to reiterate what I was talking about before, the distance that you're looking at from the the stern of the barge to the bow of the tugboat right now. Um, we, we are suspecting and anticipating that the dock is that short. So in other words, uh, I should not have to, uh, being a, meaning the dock is going to be on our port side. So um, if this was a great big dock, I'd have to do what they call the tug two landing, where the tug actually lands on the dock before the barge does. But we think that we're going to run out of out of space on the dock before the tug even gets there. And my whole thing about this is that I don't have an assist tug and there's not a lot of water in there. And this is not a job I do every single day. So putting all those together, I'm going to want to do this very slowly and take my time and uh, try to make sure everything goes right. So right now, um, I want to really put the power to it and get moving towards the dock. It's up there ahead of us. But as I've said in other videos, the more power you put in, the more power you either have to bleed out or, or power out of it. So uh, I'm going to just go nice and easy like this. And as we get closer, I'll even start reducing power. Because she's heavy. Hopefully now that we're closer, you guys can see the red, the red range lights, and you can see they're at a slant, and that means that I am too far over to the green side of the channel. As I start moving over and getting the center, and it doesn't really matter, I'm, I'm lining up for the dock right now, but uh, as I approach the middle of the channel, you see those red lights go one on top of the other, where we call it stacked, and then when we go to the other side, the slant will be the other direction. the calm before the storm. And, uh, we're going to get tons of snow and lots of wind. And uh, even though we're in the harbor, I understand that if when it blows out of the north, everything rolls in here and it gets pretty nasty right at the dock. So we might even have to turn around and put our bow into it 
tie up that way. But we'll, we'll, we're going to get to the dock first, so one thing at a time. Now you see those range lights are just about stacked. There we are. Now we're right in the middle of the channel. But we'll be crossing over to the other side as we go. Our terminal is up ahead of us. If you see, there's uh, three or four clusters up there that are dark and then yellow on top of them. Um, we're going to be going to the inside of that, so that's where we're headed. And in fact, as much as I want to go fast, I really should start bleeding off speed. I'm at 5.1 now. It just took us a while to get up to speed, so it's going to take us a while to get rid of the speed. So now I put my rudder hard over to the right, because when you take the power off, the barge wants to cross your bow. In this case, turn to the left, so I'm hard right right now. And as the speed starts to get used to it, you know, as the speed comes down, that sort of thing, um, I can start bringing my rudder more midship. There we go. Now we get it checked up, so I can bring the rudder to midship. In fact, I'm going to go all stop and just, uh, now I'm going to have to put the, because I'm going all stop, I'm going to have to put the rudder hard right again. And maybe even clutch one ahead just to keep us from spinning around. Speed is falling all the time. I'm actually doing a right twist, trying to uh, regain what I lost. Down to 3.3, 3.2 now. So the speed is coming off. Oh, and I see somebody on the dock, which is a great sign. That means we'll have somebody to catch a line for us. Just, as I take the speed off, I'm going to have to get that bow over to the other side. I mean, get the bow more to the right. problems about doing it this way is that you can lean on a barge and push it one way or the other. The problem is it doesn't pull very well when you're made up alongside it. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying that if you had a choice, you'd much rather lean into a barge and push push towards the barge side. But when you're made up like this and you want to pull the barge over to the dock on the other side, then uh, it doesn't work quite as well. So that's just something we're going to have to deal with. One of the things I want to do to deal with that is by going as slowly as possible. I was talking about the, the color of how everything looks out there, where it's gray and you kind of get the feeling it's cold out there and you get a feeling snow's going to start any minute. My mom would say it smells like snow. And although I've never smelt, I never knew what snow is supposed to smell like. I always used to giggle because my dad would say that no, that was just the dog. <laughs> okay, we're doing 2.1 knots. And unfortunately, I wish that I was much further over than I am, meaning further to the right. And unfortunately, I'm not. So I'm going to try to just lean that way a little bit while we're closing on the dock. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to go real slow and uh, roll right around there, you know. Okay, so we're down to uh, 1.4. No, it stopped working. You got a good angle all the way down that key, so I'm coming ahead. All right. Like 
I say, I would have loved to have been much more to the right, um, uh, but this will work. Once we get the bow in there, I'll be able to twist against the caisson, lift the stern over. I'm just trying to see all the way down the inside of the hole. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up there a little ways and then use the caisson to twist against to get my stern over, all right? Right, yeah, you want to line there closer to midship on the caisson? Yeah, to keep me from falling over, yeah, that'd be good. But, but um, yeah, yeah, that's good. I was going to say I need you to watch me, but I can see pretty good from here. All right, so I'm going to roll the bow in right now and uh, lean up against that case. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Hopefully, she'll come over. Hang on. Okay, so it's it's st starting to rotate for me right now, which is just what I wanted to do. So if you had to guess, how much farther would I have to come before I hit the next uh, case on? We're just starting to get a little bit of coverage on that next cell now. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you bring the bow over here, we'll be fine. We got about 50 feet ahead of us in the pilot. All right, cool. Very good. All right, so we're doing point six. Yeah, we'll get that straight line across on the case side to get something. Yeah, like um, like I say, I'll get it over there, but that's that's going to keep me from uh, falling off. You know, once we get flat. Right. And everything seems to be working out just the way we want it to right now. Now we've got the speed down to about point two knots. So I don't really need to come ahead anymore as long as I had coverage on that other case on, which he says I do. And it doesn't look like the bow is closing, but the midship is not closing. So he's going to put out a line that's going to basically be a backup for me. So in other words, if for some reason I start falling off, moving to the right, and uh, this will keep that from happening. So this is uh, my insurance plan. Or one might say that it going to act as my uh, assist hug. Oh, <laughs> tall. Oh, we got this line on 10 slowly coming into a forward frame. Can we start checking it down? Uh, no, leave about five feet of slack in it. Wrap it up, and I'll, cut, I'll watch it back here. I'll go nice and slow on it. You go up in the bow and make sure I don't hit anything, all right? Because I need you up there. Outstanding. Now I gotta watch that line because we get a lot of weight on it. So I'm gonna start backing right now. The line's coming into it. 15 line up here coming into 12. Very good. And we're good up there to land, right? Yeah, yeah, you keep bringing it like this. We're 10 line coming into 8, and we're holding about 12 feet ahead. All right. Okay, so what I'm doing now is the bow is moving fast, so I'm doing a, a right twist to bring the stern over and and to uh, slow the bow down. You want me to come ten feet ahead? No, that's what we have ahead. All right, so I'm going to come into that line. I got about three or four feet of slack in that line. Hugh, can you hear me? All right, do you want to walk down there, Hugh? Because uh, I don't think we have 40 feet to do that. He's told his office, and they might send us outside, Doc. Because right now, we will not fit. Well, here's the problem. 
if if you can tell the guy on the dock this, the problem is if they bring in another boat, an ATB that's going to go on the outside, I can't leave. I can't leave here until uh, until Sunday night, Monday morning. If it's blowing a nor'east gale over here, I'm not going to want to roll this thing in here then, light, you know? Yeah, right. All right, let's. Uh, why don't you put some slack in that line, and I'll start, or just start checking that line up for me, Hugh, and uh, Dalton will talk to us. Because if we can get this in here like this, let, that, that's going to make everything work. All right, coming ahead. Okay, I'm just coasting now, eight feet ahead. Probably coming up to six. Six feet ahead, good. Oh, Hugh, you're going to be able to make this work. Are there dolphins that we can lean against with a stern? No, not, not coming in like this. There's this corner of the dock up here that would come into first before the dolphin. Okay, and when the barge comes up, it's not going to hit any of that metal on top of the dock, is it? No, we got plenty of clearance on it. We can't come ahead more than five feet. We'll be into it. Okay, uh, should we keep coming ahead? Yeah, we got another three or four feet to play with. All right, very good. Give me another bump. All right, wrap that up, you. All right, maybe he goes, goes, maybe Hugh goes down there and he'll tell us that he can make this work. So they're putting out more lines, so I'm thinking that maybe uh, this is going to work after all. <laughs> I think sometimes the uh, tankermen are just as human as anybody else, although some might debate that. <laughs> but uh, they uh, like to do things the same way all the time, and if this isn't their regular run, they come and say, Oh my God, we can't do this this way. We need to be this way. Well, no, you probably can make it. You just have to turn the... Uh, you just have to turn the, the crane 180 degrees around. It rotates 360. All right, I was just twisting that bow out a little bit because it looked like we were, we, we were in. So if you need me to bring it back, I'm all stopped now. Yeah, we should be good. We're just like maybe a half inch off that open up there. All right, cool. Oh. That would be very nerve-wracking. I don't mind going out to the outside, but my problem is that, that ATBs can handle a lot more seas than we can because uh, they're connected in there. They have a big notch, and they have these huge, massive pins that hold them in place. So I think on the orders, we see an ATB that's supposed to come in later when it's, when it's really nasty, and they have to go to the outside because it's so, it's so, uh, they're so big. 
And what I didn't want was for them to try to pump us on the outside and then say, okay, you're going to get out of here, the ATV's coming. I'm not moving this thing. When it's light and uh, trying to do what we just did here, when uh, it's blowing 35 and snowing and all the lines in the decks are frozen, no, I want, that's why I uh, want to make sure that we got this to work. And that's it. What's going on, Hugh? Just waiting for you to uh, break down right here so I can get that line out. And uh, we can make it work. Oh, okay, very good. Good deal. I'll be down. Okay, so I guess we're good. That's going to be it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to check out SP Paquita. I'm always pushing that because I'm really trying to get that thing going. It's my big pet project. Come on over. I'll put a link in the description. You guys be safe and uh, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the market.